Fred Ricciani of TSC News. My phone is blowing up right now because according to Pro Wrestling Sheet, ROH may be purchased by WWE. That's right. Sinclair Broadcast Group, SBG, the billion-dollar broadcasting corporation, which doesn't really put a whole lot of money into ROH, could sell Ring of Honor Wrestling to WWE. Now, according to Pro Wrestling Sheets' Ryan Satan, it looks like if this sale does go through, the ROH would most likely become a weekly TV show on the network, which on one hand is pretty good if you're an ROH roster member, especially for all those, pretty much probably all of them, who secretly or knowingly or publicly want to go to the WWE. But... Scott Anderson, who's also on the line right now, as, as we were discussing off the air, this could be really bad for the wrestling industry, huh? It definitely could be really bad. Um, you know, I said on one of our shows last week that in 10 to 15 years, WWE is going to take over everything. And unfortunately, it seems like that might be coming true faster than we thought. Yeah, and I've said this before on the podcast. I think it's kind of ridiculous that all these UK promoters are just willingly lending their stars to WWE because short term, yeah, it's going to make a difference to your bottom line. And I guess if you're somebody that's just trying to make money in wrestling, which is extremely hard to do, especially as a promoter, it makes sense. But long term when WWE, when Vince McMahon wakes up and says, God damn, I don't want Tyler Bate on those shows. It's going to be bad for you if you want to remain in business. Now, in the case of Sinclair, this is actually one hell of a shrewd business move if it goes through. Because if they're not investing a whole lot of money into ROH, they're probably going to sell ROH back for a whole lot of money. Well, they're going to sell ROH. They're not going to sell it back to Kerry Silken, but they're going to sell it, and they're probably going to make a nice return. So as far as business people, kudos to them if this deal goes through. However, I do think it's bad for the industry because it's one less promotion for wrestlers to work for that's truly independent. Although you make an argument now with ROH being owned by Sinclair, a gigantic corporation, it's not really independent. The fact that more guys are going to be on the WWE banner. The whole theory, the whole idea of WWE having NXT, Raw, SmackDown, a UK satellite promotion, an Asian satellite promotion, perhaps down the road an Indian satellite promotion, Chinese promotion, Ring of Honor. It sounds great in theory, but at the end of the day, can they execute it? At what point does having too much talent, too many cooks in the kitchen, at what point does that defeat the purpose of what they're trying to accomplish, Scott? I think we're seeing it right now at this year's WrestleMania. Um you know, too much talent to trying to put everybody on the show. You're having, you know, multiple person tag matches, multiple person title matches, multiple person matches. And, you know, I think long term, yeah. I mean, you know, what about these lower level guys who are basically there just to work house shows? On the other hand, this will give some of this talent a break. You know, I mean, Dean Ambrose is always saying he's on the road, you know, 280, 300 days a year. Well, maybe now he won't have to do that because you have guys from ROH coming in to, you know, lighten the load a little bit. So it's going to be a good and a bad thing. And even what they're doing now with, um, excuse me, with uh, NXT and, you know, ICW and the UK stuff, you know, they have these guys coming in for Access Weekend. So again, a little bit less load on some of the talent that might be working those shows. So, again, it could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. Good is that, yeah, you have a lot of talent and, you know, you can stretch your, your roster out and, you know, take them out, do, you know, lighten the load on some of these full time guys. But the negative is there's no competition, there's nothing else out there. So, and when we say no competition, we also mean that there is no leverage for a lot of these guys to make that money. Now, if you just want to be a guy that says, hey, I got to WWE, that's great. But in a way, and this might be an unpopular opinion, I feel like WWE is starting to almost become kind of like the modern day UFC in some ways. Where 10 years ago, not everybody made it to the UFC. Only a select few. And you can make the argument that with the UFC, with WWE, there's some fighters, some wrestlers that should have been there from the get-go like AJ Styles and Fedor and whatever you want to say. But right now, UFC has, what, 500 roster, 500 uh, fighters on its roster right now? 
I mean, I know they're making cuts here and there, but the UFC has a ton of talent. Some of the best athletes in the world. Guess how many of those athletes can sell a ticket? Probably one or two. You got George St. Pierre, who was retired for four years. You have Conor McGregor, who may not fight in MMA in the near future. You have whatever the hell's left of Ronda Rousey, and I don't see her coming back. Not much at this point, exactly. unfortunately. Exactly. So, out of a roster of a few hundred fighters, 300 fighters, you have one to two people who can draw. Now, WWE, I think, has done a pretty decent job with the brand split to an extent. I think SmackDown's been pretty good. Raw, not so much. Ratings-wise, not so much. Is adding more bodies going to solve the problem of them somehow, some way, more often than not, not being able to get some exceptional talent over? I don't think so. What do you think, Scott? No, I agree with you, but again, I think it comes back to, you know, the last year at WrestleMania, we saw Randy Orton out, we saw John Cena out, we we saw a lot of guys injured because you now granted those guys, you know, basically work a part time schedule, but it'll help in one aspect and it won't help in another. And, and it'll uh, help I, if I they just get, said that. Hang on, hang on though. It'll but, it'll help if they get over some of these it, it, Hypothetically speaking, let's say you bought ROH well, tomorrow and decide next week decide next week we're gonna have the show on the network, right? All right. Is there any guarantee that if they were to move some of these guys to the main roster, that they would get over to the point where they could be viable replacements even on house shows for John Cena, Randy Orton, Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns? I think it depends on what city you're running. You know, Ring of Honor is national, but they're very low level national, unfortunately. But if you run a show in Philly, Baltimore, you know, East Coast, I think you'll be okay. Florida, you'll be but okay. WWE, but you know Some what, of though? those areas. But you've, been, but you've been to house shows recently. I sure. have, too. WWE fans are, are very different nowadays. Yeah, there's a lot of the older fans like us that grew up watching. They're still watching to this day. But there's a lot of young kids. There's a lot of families. And unfortunately, with WWE booking, there's very few guys protected. There's who? Roman Reigns. Stephanie Stephanie McMahon. True, but as far as guys that actually wrestle. <laughs> sure. Roman, Roman Reigns, John Cena, more often than not, Braun Strowman. And I would say AJ Styles is AJ pretty protected. St- AJ Styles has been, but AJ had some bad booking at first, and he got over in sure. spite of that awkward booking, you know, losing to Jericho, losing yeah. to Roman Reigns, being like 0 for 3 on pay-per-view before finally beating John well, Cena. Okay, but he paid his dues in WWE. Now look where he is. So... If you want to go with that, fine. True, but uh, AJ Styles is also an exceptional talent, and not everybody would be able to survive that booking the first few months. No, but by that same token, you know, we talk about guys like Cesaro, like Sami Zayn, like Shane, you know, even Sheamus, and you could easily, you know, interchange Adam Cole for Sheamus or, or Cesaro, and and that's unfortunate to say because those guys could be top stars, but you could interchange those people, and I don't think it would really make much of a difference at the gate. True. True. Although Adam Cole is is a superstar, he really is. And oh, he, Adam Cole is absolutely. But I, Bobby but, Fish, but I know, uh, Kyle Riley, sure. I yeah. mean, Jay Lethal could be. Absolutely. You could see that. But yeah. now here's one other thing: if WWE has any type of smarts to them, and we all know what they're going to do, you keep ROH the way it is. You know, you enhance the lighting, you enhance the product a little bit, but but why not let guys like Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel go to the the ROH product and then go to NXT and, you know, you can interchange guys all around. So maybe it freshens things up a little bit more because, you know, guys like that who just basically work these house shows who, who aren't doing a whole lot, it might help them to go to an ROH. And, and, you know, even though it's under the WWE umbrella, it would still help them with that product. You know, they can go do those smaller venues and then move up to NXT and kind of reinvent themselves almost like Bray Wyatt did. I agree. That would be awesome. But, you know, they still have a show called NXT, which is in dire need of replenishing. And long term, and not saying I would love to see this because I wouldn't, long term, would it really serve WWE any purpose to keep ROH going? I mean, they run enough shows. You know, they run more than enough shows. Uh, Their talent's already spread thin, as you said. And to me, it's like you could use that talent from WWE standpoint. You could use that talent for the UK shows coming up. You can use that talent for 205 Live. You can use that talent for NXT. I think the last thing they need is to be adding more programming. Now, they can add archival programming with ROH. If they made a deal where maybe – well, 
if they're buying it from Sinclair, they're going to be footing the bill. That's another thing. It's not like they have 10 million subscribers or God even knows how many subscribers Netflix has. I think like 100 million now. I mean, they don't have remotely close to the subscriber base of some of the top subscription services. So to have 1.6 million, 1.7 million subscribers and then to add additional costs. Now, their TV money is going to be going up the next couple of years. But what I think is a very undercovered story is the ratings keep going down. The ratings keep going down. And they assume just because they're higher than the station average that they're going to be fine. But what's going to happen in a couple of years, Scott, when USA Network in a very different TV landscape says, you know what, guys? We're going to pay you around the same or maybe less. How do you think stockholders are going to react to that? I think that's a very realistic possibility. And again, buying ROH, I think it's bad for the industry from a competition standpoint, from a leverage standpoint. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's good for WWE to get a, you know, a competitor out of their hair. But if they keep it going and they're pumping in more money and they need to make up that money. They already got to make up the money from the pay-per-view era. They haven't made that up yet. So you're telling me you're going to add ROH and that's automatically going to make it up? I don't know. At that point, I think it'd be better served replenishing NXT. Why can't you do both? I mean, again, NXT you know, is just, but dude, NXT is essentially the new ROH anyway in a lot of fans' eyes. It really, it, well, it was it's the until new recently. ROH and new impact. I, I understand, and, but and at again, the, and at the same it, time, ROH, I think personally, has been artificially bumped up the last couple of years when it comes to attendance and appeal because of their relationship with New Japan. Now, you take away the relationship sure. with New Japan, with all due respect to some of the great talent they've had there. I don't think they're doing, you know, record gates uh, from a couple years back. I don't think they're getting that kind of buzz. Well, well I'll say this as far as ROH goes. I just watched uh, last week's TV show at work today. Uh, let's not tell anybody about that, but I did. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it wasn't, you know, all that fascinating to me. I mean, they did a Future Stars thing. They had the Young Bucks on there who, you know, they're, I don't see them going to WWE if, if they buy out Ring of Honor. I think they would be happy with Japan and the independents and, and doing their thing there. Um, but yeah, the show wasn't that great overall. Unfortunately, it just wasn't. And, um, you know, I still think that it, I think if they kept it the way it was, and I know Vince McMahon won't do it, maybe Triple H would, you got, you have to keep that. If you're going to keep that promotion running, you keep it the way it is. You keep running these venues the way you are. I mean, I, I think it could work if they did it right, but that's the key. Would they do it right? And I, I just don't know the answer to that. And another show we are forgetting is 205 Live. And, you know, a lot of these ROH guys, let's be honest, fit that category as well. So you might be right. I mean, I would hope for the business that they keep it separate and maybe use it as a proving ground and run some small venues and run some small shows and let these guys learn and then go to NXT and, you know, um, you know, get their skills just a little bit better and just keep going up the ladder. I mean, I don't see that as a bad thing, but I think you're right that overall it's definitely bad for business the business in general, what they do it, because then, you know, you're looking at uh, impact wrestling, which, you know, for the last 10 years, we've been talking about going out of business every day and WWE in Japan. And that's really all you have. I mean, you yeah, have Mexico, I mean, you have Mexico, but, but Mexico is not, you know, paying a whole lot depending on who you are. I mean, J new Japan can only take so many foreigners and again, look at the young, again, look at the young, you, you mentioned the young bucks, right? We're talking about leverage and money. The young bucks got apparently one of the richest contracts in ring of honor history. And, they ain't getting that if Ring of Honor was owned by WWE. No, not at all. And Impact's I mean, I not like looking to spend money right now. So, I mean, no. it's... Look, and the Hardys you, wouldn't get their contracts either. And, and you know... It's it just... Yeah. Dude, it's, it's just like, it's like this, okay? If you want to be in WWE, I'd say now is probably... I don't want to say the easiest time to ever get into WWE, but it, if you are good, and a good wrestler, and you keep your nose clean and you make the right connections, and you bust your butt, and you do what you have to do, I think you have a better chance of getting on TV more than maybe ever in history, honestly, if, you're, if you really think about how much talent they have and with the Cruiserweight division and all the bodies they need. I mean, who would have thought a guy like Tyler Bate, who's really talented, would be on the freaking roster, right? Ten years ago, just five years ago, it's, it's, it's crazy to think about. So from that standpoint, you can make the argument, being there, even if you're not making the most money, it's good you're in the WWE banner because if you're under it, you always have a chance of getting 
plucked out of whatever situation and being put in a better situation. Plus, it would help raise your fee once if you were released and go out on the independence. I mean, unless you're Jinder Mahal, but you know, if in the case of like a Cody Rhodes or, or a few other guys like Drew Galloway, they've done very well outside of WWE. But yeah, I mean, look, anybody is kidding themselves or doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. If they said WCW going out of business was great for the industry because it wasn't. And granted, ROH ain't WCW. It seemed like it at the time because of how bad WCW was, but no, it definitely wasn't. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, I'll tell you this. ROH has definitely had an impact on the business. It's definitely been the breeding ground. But it's been the breeding ground for future WWE stars away from WWE. And I just... I don't know, man. You know what? I mean, they've been creatively stale. If Sinclair doesn't want to put money in, if if, if they're kind of saying, you know what, we're paying some of these guys money, but we want to make our money back. I get it from a business standpoint, but... I don't know. It's a little disappoint. It's a little. It's a little disappointing. And and, and I guess in some ways, it kind of. I don't know. If it, I guess it's a good thing. Impact still in business because if somehow by some miracle, okay, if hell freezes over, if by some miracle they're able to actually turn it around. I'm not just talking about creatively, but financially, in the next year. You know, they're by default the number two promotion in, in the U.S. Unless, of course, you know, New Japan right. decides to expand in the U.S. But even then, that's a risky venture, which we could talk about. Uh, down the road so i want to hear from you guys but first i just want to say real quick before we go scott you and i got the news that jan ross the wife of jim ross of many years uh passed away unfortunately she was riding her vespa it's like a kind of like a you know some type of motorcycle and, and it's like, a, like a scooter basically yeah scooter yeah motorized scooter and she got hit um in her native state of oklahoma and unfortunately, she wasn't wearing a helmet, and um, she she suffered a catastrophic brain injury, and she passed away. And it's uh, very devastating, not only for the fact that, you know, we're fans of Jim Ross, but, you know, I've had him on the show three times. I didn't talk to him in a while, but he took the time to look at my highlight reel. He took the time to give me feedback. He took the time to talk to me on the phone off air. It was just super nice, super helpful, a down-to-earth guy great great guy and ironically enough right i sent him an email the other night asking him if he wanted to be on the show because for those that don't know we're now on television in manhattan new york and i said hey man you know i just want to see if you were available to talk about your show and i said oh by the way you provided me advice a couple years ago that was very helpful i just want to say thank you so much for it i put it to good use thank you know thanks so much hopefully we talk soon and then literally you know no less than 24 hours later he sends a tweet about how his wife got into an accident and then Another 24 hours later, his wife passes away. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's a crappy situation. It's terrible. We here at TSC News extend our our deepest condolences to uh, Jim Ross and his family. I urge all of you to send in your tweets, your Facebook messages, whatever to Jim Ross. He is nobody deserves this at all. And the fact that this is a guy that is a friend of the show, for that to happen to him, and such a legend, such a good dude, such a mentor to so much young talent, whether it be in broadcasting or in pro wrestling, it's it it, it is devastating. So may Jan Ross rest in peace. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Uh, very quickly before I go as well, no no real easy transition here, so I, I apologize. But if you are in the New York area and you want to check out our uh, brand new show, Scott and I are actually literally going to record for our, our brand new show in Manhattan before this ROH news broke. You can check me out on Manhattan Neighborhood Network 2, MNN2, on Fios Channel 34, RCN Channel 83, and Time Warner Cable Channel 56 and 1996 in Manhattan. Now, if you're not in Manhattan, you can stream us live at MNN.org. That's MNN.org. Just click on the link for MNN2, the Lifestyle Channel, at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday. Thursdays, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and if for whatever reason you can't watch us live, you can't stream us live, that's okay because episodes are going to be available on demand right here on the Sports Courier YouTube channel. So, again, thank you very much for the support. Thank you for listening. We'd love to hear from you. And, again, when you get some free time, please extend your condolences to Jim Ross because he uh, certainly needs all our support. Until next time, everybody, as always, enjoy the magic.